Welcome back to the podcast, Greg. Hey, it's great to be here. Great to be here, and thank you guys so much for listening in. It's always encouraging getting feedback from our church members. You church members are our target audience. We want this to be a blessing to our members. That's what yeah, we kind of established right. when you and I first sat down to talk about it, so... That's yeah, neat. We got a text right before we went live today, which was encouraging. That you know, it kind of encouraged somebody else. So that's what we want. It is that, and that's exactly right. And so, I would say we also had someone talk to me Sunday, and they admitted that like I didn't even know about it. You know, I was like, you know, that's probably a good word too. That if you're enjoying the podcast, we would certainly say, hey, let a church member know because they may not know what's happening, they may benefit from it as well. So that's right. I mean, be- word of mouth is still. We're not trying to reach the nations here with this podcast, so. I'm not so worried about, you know, retweets on a massive yep. social media scale. But if you're having a conversation with a church member and you want to mention it, it's not yep. a bad thing because we love people to be able to listen if if it's something that fits in their lifestyle and what they need. That's right. Because podcasts aren't for everybody. And that's yeah. fair. But yeah. for, it is for some people. And even the, the one gentleman talking to me was like, I've never really listened to podcasts, but I like what y'all are doing. I'm listening. <laughs> yeah, so that was good. that was neat. So, But it's not Sunday morning equivalent. There's that's not an right. expectation. Hey, you should be in church frequently, you know. <laughs> that's but right. Listen to the podcast if you choose to do so. That's right. And as we do <laughs> kind of collect you know, topics, I do think it can be good reference points for us to have in the back pocket. Hopefully these conversations can be things we can utilize as tools in the future, you know, yeah. for, for not only us as pastors, but church members, we, we get into discussion like today that could benefit someone down the road. So that's right. are you ready to get into it? I'm ready. All right. So we had a topic and then we kind of redirected here, yes, sir. kind of sensitive to the world and news events and Christians' responses. And so did you see the Olympic opening ceremony. I did not. But I, I didn't either, I by the way. <laughs> all the the response. To I was it. watching yeah. the Olympics the next day just enjoying it and yeah. happened to get on Facebook and it's like, what is going on right now? Yeah. Now, I did see a montage of like the scene that really blew everyone's top along with the, the original painting of The Last Supper. And yep. it's like, okay, I mean, we got to decide how we're going to feel, but they can... And they've tried to weave a little scenario, a little bit, what sure. they were tr- actually trying to do. No, they they were directly taking a... They were trying to come up with some sort of comparison of, mm. of the original. Yep. There, there's no doubt about yep. that. Again, yep. what their point was, I guess we could debate that, but there's no doubt they were trying to yep. copy it in some form. Yep. And it's interesting because I see... I've seen both sides and then one... Some comments are like, guys, settle down. This is what they were actually doing. And it was like some, I don't know, was it some kind of festival or something that happened yeah, back in the day where everybody got weird and Bacchanalia. Yeah, I mean, but it but you know, that's yeah, to your point, it seems like a pretty far stretch to to go that route. Either way, yeah. I'm curious, like, what's your response to that? Well, yeah, there's there's a lot of layers <laughs> to that, I guess. You know, I, I I'm gonna say this because I'll never have an opportunity to do so again. Um I heard a I heard Whoopi Goldberg say something this past week, and I've never agreed with her in like the last 20 years, probably. Did but she say something worth she, repeating? Okay. Well, I'm, you know, I'm shocked. She right said, now. if you don't like it, turn it off. I'm like, okay, well, that's very simple. And actually, you know, that would probably be my advice um, if, if it offends you. If anything offends you, you know, on social media, on television, at the movie theater, One of the ways you get a vote in our society is you don't have to listen. You turn it off. If this podcast is not worth your time, (laughs) don't listen again. You know, I mean, but you don't have to call us and say, that's a waste of time. Would y'all stop doing that? No, we're going to do it for the people who appreciate it and the people who don't, don't listen. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that simple. So that would be my first thing um, because there's kind of this idea. And I, again, I think social media has done it. It's like I'm offended and I'm outraged, so now I have to somehow get everyone else to feel the way I do. Yeah. And let's cause the Olympics to stop, or you know, yeah. can we boycott? Hey, boycott yeah. if you want to. You know, I mean, but that's just the first simple way. If mm. if you were offended, don't watch. Mm. Now, my reaction, um, being honest, I. As I as I read about it and I saw it, and I even read about the response of the people who planned it, yeah. I'm offended. I mean, and I, I think their intent was to mock Christianity. Mm. They can cloud it however they want. Um, am I surprised? No. Yeah. Um, am I up in arms and we got to see somebody get fired? No, because this is yeah. pretty... I mean, 
it's France and it's the Olympics. You know, the Olympics are what a riff off of Greek games. Am I yeah, correct I'm, on that? I, I mean, not, I, I I think the original yeah. um, the original marathon was certainly Greek, and mm. so the whole idea of the Olympics comes from Greek subculture. So. Yeah. You know, they claim they were doing some sort of Bacchanalia, Dionysius um, festival. Mm. Well, I'll give them that mm. until they intentionally lined up the drag queens in a way to recreate mm. the Last Supper painting that we're mm. all so familiar with. It's like, okay, whatever you were doing, you've now made an intentional point yep. to take a shot at a, a major religion. Yep. And I just always find it curious. No one will do that about a Muslim faith mm. mythology. You you won't do that about Buddha. Why is it Christianity is always the one faith that gets targeted or mocked openly? Mm. Why is it that you can do that and in a sense get away with it? And I would argue one of the reasons why is because the right Christian response, it can be to be offended, it can be to not watch anymore, it can be to have conversations like yep. this, but it can't be, let's go hurt somebody in response. Mm. You do that to the Muslim world, yep. can we be honest, what's going to happen? Yep. There's, there's a gonna, reason people don't do there's that. There's going to be riots yep. and fires in the streets of France had they done that. Yep. So, um, But yeah, I, that's we got a lot to talk about, but I, I saw and I read... And it was offensive, and I think it was intended to be offensive. Now they've backpedaled quite a bit, but yep. um, I'm not buying the the excuses that they've made. Yep. Um, although I will give them, it's France, it's the Olympics. I'm not surprised that Bacchanalia and, and Dionysius yep. and, and all those things, yep. they're going to parade it around because that's yep. part of what they want to celebrate. And they have the freedom to do that. Yep. I do think in... In traditional culture, you cross a line, mm. do your drag queen stuff. Again, I'm not going to attend. I would mm. recommend no one watch. Mm. But I get the fact that in a democratic society, in a free culture, people are going to do that. They sure. can do that. When you cross the line into mocking a religion, now why'd you do that? You yeah. know what? Yeah. Why did, What's the point? In a, in a sense, you started a fight now. Yeah. And they've got a fight. Yeah. I mean, Well, that's what made me sad about it was that, and I'm like you, like I wasn't... I would. My only shock was how surprised a lot of Christians were. Like the surprise was what caught me because I'm like, I, again, it's like if if we read our Bible, like I'm pretty sure like this is kind of <laughs> par for the course from the world, yeah, the flesh, the devil. Like that's gonna happen. Like they not only mocked Jesus, they put him on a cross. Like this is this is like this is what Jesus is. And even the disciples can anyway. But yeah. I, I was surprised people were so surprised. But it did make me sad. And I saw one person say something really well, which was they missed an opportunity to unite. One fun thing about the Olympics yeah. are it is a like me and the kids. We've been having we are watching it. Um, I'm not happy with with their mockery of the Lord's Supper, but I still am not going to make the athletes who didn't make that decision suffer. Like our athletes for it, none the of the swimmers athletes were responsible. No, for that. they they and they I'm, they may not even know what's happening. So like I don't I want to enjoy watching them, and and we think it's a fun thing in our house to just see these athletes get uh, once every four years. That's pretty rare. Yeah, and so to see them compete, it's exciting. It's fun. It's really neat to see the elite of the elite do that. And so I was just sad that I think, and I have not watched many open ceremonies to. Full disclosure, yeah. I've just not done that. I traditionally find them boring, so I don't tend to to, yeah. to be honest. I want to see I want to see competition. Yep. I want to see the athletes do their thing. I don't care about yep. the song and dance. And now I, mean, I think they've just settled it for me. <laughs> nor will I ever care to even try to watch the opening ceremony. You know, it's like you know maybe I'll hear about somebody next time doing it right and, and using it as an opportunity to unite and yeah. us all kind of the world kind of come together to watch this massive stage that only happens once every four years. That would have been neat. And so opportunity missed. I thought that was well said. Yeah. You know, that's what made me sad because I thought now you've you've kind of robbed from what could have been. Yeah, and I think that's where as as much as what they did, I think was intended to be shock value and to get our attention, mocking that portrayal of the Last Supper. Again, they did that intentionally. It irked me even more that when pressed for an explanation, their yeah. response was, "Well, we just did what yeah. we did to be inclusive, yeah. to um, to be to to unite people." Like, no, I mean, I'm not buying that. That's yeah. where you're you're lying to me now. And I think that's the bigger conversation for us, just on a you know an ongoing basis. And that's where 
I'm not one of those boycott the Olympics. I, no, I, I think you're punishing the wrong people. Like yeah. the athletes didn't do anything wrong. Watch the Olympics if you want to watch the Olympics. Um, but we do need to understand that there is a spiritual battle. Mm. It's always present. Mm. And, um, you know, the world, the flesh, and the devil are out there. And I would say certainly the gentleman who was interviewed who directed all that, he is not a believer and mm. he's – He's happy about it. Yeah. Um, and he intentionally orchestrated some things to be offensive. He did it mm. on purpose. He can say whatever he wants. I'm not buying it. Again, it doesn't mm. surprise me. I don't want his his job. The truth yeah. is the other organizers of the Olympics in France were probably really happy with what he did. Yeah. You know, we've got to know, though, that as Christians, we are in a battle. Mm. And I, I think I would just encourage people, stop being surprised. Mm. You know, like you're saying, yeah. I mean, heck, Paul went to Athens, you know, yeah. shortly after the crucifixion of Christ, and he was offended by the multiplicity of the gods there. Mm. Um, he preached Jesus in response. He didn't mm. say, you need to fire whoever's running the Parthenian. Mm. Or, you know, he, I think we've got to learn from that. Um, if, if people are naive and they think the kingdom's going to come now mm. through Christian political pressure, through you know, us taking control of everything and, and getting things to always conform mm. to our morals and our ways, that's that position is not tenable. You know, mm. the only way Christianity is is going to be a present kingdom is when Jesus returns mm. because the enemies are, are out to take our culture in a different way. Yeah. And I think to me, the opening Olympics is a vivid illustration of the fact that they have a goal mm. and the goal is to, um, it may be to unite everyone against Christianity. Mm. It's certainly not to unite with mm. Christianity. Christianity is the enemy. Yeah. He told us that by making that. I mean, you can't do much worse than have a, you know, there was some demonic man in a blue outfit like some sort of demigod, and he yeah. may have been playing Dionysius for all I know. But you have a blue god running around on stage at the same time you're creating the Last Supper and a drag queen's wearing a, a deity crown in the centerpiece where Jesus sits. You can't get much more offensive yeah. than that if you're not trying. I, mm, I don't buy you're not no. trying. You're trying, and your point is... We disparage you. We don't dis. We don't yeah. like you at all, and yeah. we wish you would shut up and go away. Yep. And then let us do our thing. That's the message. Well, can I ask you this? Because <laughs> from a, I guess, you know, you've always said convictions for versus commands, and I think if someone has the conviction where that made them tune out the Olympics, that's fine. Please respect me for feeling the freedom to yeah. watch. I never. By the way, I didn't. Show, I did see the picture. I never watched it. I think I read enough to know this. The direction they went, I was it's like, gonna make I'm, me angry while watch. I'm good. Like <laughs> I'm gonna enjoy the athletes and what they've done. Y'all did that, so y'all can yeah. have that. I'm not worried about it. So give me that. Maybe on a different scale, I'm curious because, and you know, this might offend people. I don't know. It bring. It, it's interesting to me when Christians choose to speak out. I find it very interesting that people can come up with very good excuses on why they're not asking people spiritual questions, you know, from neighbors yeah. to coworkers to people they work with, what, whatever, what people they in, engage with on a weekly, daily basis. But yet we're real quick to talk about this. I don't understand that. I do, I do think part of us should question if, like, because that was my thought. Does Jesus need me to defend him? No. Because a lot no. of Christians jump on this, like, how dare they, you know, we're going to, I'm like, but where are y'all at every other day? Like, Yeah, be well, Jesus at your workplace. Yeah. So part of me was a little discouraged by that, just to be honest with you, because I feel like, guys, we got an opportunity. If we're waiting for the world to mock Christianity, to actually speak up about Christianity, I think we missed something. Is that yeah. fair? Yeah, and it's not a great time to have a conversation about somebody coming to know Jesus either. I mean, yeah. you made me mad, and now I want to berate yeah, you. I mean, yeah. let me tell you about my Savior. <laughs> I don't think that's happening. And, yeah. and so, yeah, I'm with you entirely. That's why I'm like... Don't be surprised. Don't be naive. We're yeah. in a war. You know, all those things are true. They've been true for centuries. They're yeah. still true. They'll be true tomorrow. So what are you going to do about it? And yeah. my thing is what we need to do about it is be authentic believers in Jesus yeah. and love your families and love your church and love your neighbors and love your coworkers. Yeah. And don't wait for something offensive yeah. to get you fired up. Is That's not a good time to share Christ. Be Jesus on a day-in yeah. and day-out basis and have authentic biblical conversations when there's no 
wickedness in the room yeah. or when there's not a, you know, roadkill on TV. Yeah. You know, I, I, yeah, the, the culture of being offended is not an effective way to share the gospel. Mm. Um, and it's just not. You know, and that's why I, I think, like we're saying, I, if if you were offended, I think that's a normal reaction yeah. if you're a believer. Yeah. But what are you going to do with that offense? Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think most people yeah. don't do anything real effective yeah. with it. Well, and I, I think those are natural emotions, and you uh, admitted that. I didn't. Um, my reaction, just because I saw the picture, was kind of shake my head and be like, of course, that that's so that's idiotic. Like, of course, yeah. they're going to do that. Um, it's like, what what is a proper Christian's response to evil, to mockery of Christ? Like, obviously, I think it's natural to have those. It, like, that's sad. It is sad. Yeah. Like, if I watched it, I'm sure I would have a different type of emotion. It's probably why I didn't. Yeah, it you didn't know? do you any good. I mean... No, and so how do we handle that just in a world that is going to mock? I mean, Jesus, he warned us of this. Um, you know, well, the I can't think of the verse. Um, well, he, if the world hates you... Just remember, it hated me first. Yeah, which to me kind of implies like there's going to be moments where the world hates you. It, it tend, he tend to have that implication. Um, all those who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. There's this the mockery that the world being against us is real. Sometimes we get protected from that because of whatever circumstance we don't feel that in these moments. How, how do you wrestle with the tension of um, those things are going to happen? You know, maybe even directly towards us. Yeah. How do we handle that? It's not wrong to feel offended, to feel sad, to be angry. Some of those are natural emotions that I don't think are wrong, but but is is how we respond, what is the best way to, how do we deal with that, admitting that, it, okay, it's okay to feel these emotions, now how do I deal with that, right? Because sometimes yeah. we, out of those emotions, can can act ungodly, right? We, we can let, we can let would, a foolishness come out of us now in response yeah. to, and it's genuine. Like it's so, I, I would say to anyone out there who got angry, who watched it, I don't think they're wrong for feeling that. No. I, or wrong for being offended or wrong for being upset or wrong for being sad. I do think we can be wrong in our response out of that. How do we guard yeah. ourselves in those moments? I mean, we love Jesus. Like I don't want Jesus to be made fun of. Um, he doesn't need me to defend him, but I mean, I don't want to let that slide either, right? So yeah. how do we protect ourselves, man? It's okay to feel those emotions, but but man, I can't let myself become ungodly either. Yeah, you know, there's there's obviously a lot of gray on on people's response, I think, but I mean, you painted a pretty good picture of it. I, you know, I found it offensive, didn't watch it live, read about it in the backside and, and you know, looked at everything. It's It's offensive. But I haven't had a single conversation with anybody about it until we sat down and, and you threw this question to me on the podcast because, one, who cares what Greg thinks about the Olympics? Let's be honest. I mean, you know, the director obviously doesn't care what I think, you know. So, Fair point. Um, but also, yeah. you know, like you're saying, I think my anger in a, or the offense is authentic. And, you know, Scripture even says we should hate what Christ hates. Mm. Well, I, I think, you know, when you make a mockery of Jesus and substitute a drag queen in, okay, I, I think you're getting very close to something that I, I feel mm. like I could say, Lord doesn't like that a whole yeah. lot. You know, is hate may be a strong word. I, I think that's disappointing. But what would Jesus' response be? Mm. And how would he want his, his children to respond? Well, I think we get a New Testament template of that. Jesus walked around primarily in the Roman Empire. Um, you know, the Romans were in control of virtually every city that he went to. Um, they were ungodly. They sanctioned mm. all kinds of heathen behaviors, you could say. And, you know, funny thing is we don't see Jesus going to a, a single place where the Romans were in control and rebuking and judging and and being divisive, okay? Now, I think we've, we've got to make a strong case. Jesus is holy. So when he sees wickedness, there's a natural response that wickedness is against the will of God and mm. it is wrong. Mm. And he's aware I came so that people might get forgiveness for that. Now they're mm. going to have to repent to get it. Yeah. You know, I'm not just going to give them a get out of jail free card, but I don't ever see him initiating those judgmental conversations. Things came to him. You know, anytime he mm. rebuked the Pharisees, it's because they they came to him and initiated. Test, yeah. He's like, now that you brought it up, whitewashed tombs. You know, mm. you look good on the outside, you're wicked on the inside. I mean, he would rebuke, but what we see 
is a Jesus who is very strategic. I, I have a primary goal, which is to share the truth of why I came so mm. that people might be redeemed. Mm. And he spends his time focused on the gospel. And, you know, the, the few times we see legitimate anger from him, like when he cleansed the temple, don't tell me he wasn't angry because yeah. he's yeah. running a whip and knocking over tables. I yeah. think he was angry. Yeah. Now, again, he's thoroughly justified in his anger. Yeah. My problem is that most of the time when I'm angry, maybe not most of the time, a lot of the time when I'm <laughs> angry, I'm angry because some selfish need of Greg's didn't get what I didn't get what I wanted so I'm angry I okay. get angry at the motorist in front of me you know yep. okay that's yeah probably not but I, I will say this I get angry but I don't flip on the bird and I don't get out of the car and give them the finger I don't you know <laughs> yeah. I don't have a conflict with them so at least yep. I'm not acting on the anger yep. and I, I think that would be the first step in your question is what how do we respond when we're angry well First, let's not inflict harm on somebody mm. when we're angry. Mm. There is never a biblical sanction for that. Mm. Um, and I'd go even further. God is the judge. So if mm. somebody's going to get judged, if there's going to be a consequence, yeah. if if God is so offended by what happened at the Olympics that he's more than capable without lifting you know, in his proverbial pinky finger, he can deal out justice to those yeah. who, you know, not my business. Yeah. So my business is... Again, I think like Jesus, let's focus on the gospel. Let's mm. do the right thing the right way. Mm. I can only control my house, my home, mm. my friends. You yeah. know, And even that, I can't control anybody, but yeah. I can say the right things. Yeah. So I'd say sit on that anger. Mm. It's okay to feel it. It can be justified. But if there's a, a next step, that's God's business. Yeah, that's good. Man, I had a thought and it's gone, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I had a direction I wanted to go because I was thinking about that. It's tough, man. It's tough. Well, I even you you regroup and think. Okay. There's something I was right. thinking about. Right. I even think like on a controversy like this, one of the places once I get over my anger, one of the things I had sympathy for is you got these athletes, most of whom we do not know. Yeah. Now we've got pros there now. So you've got LeBron yeah. and you've got Simone Biles. You got a few people with a national yeah. following to mm -hmm. some degree. What Coco Groff, I think, is playing okay. tennis and Scotty Scheffler. These people get mics put okay. in their faces a lot. Yeah. Admittedly. But like I saw some dude who who got bronze in the pommel horse. Um he has some issue with his eyes mm -hmm. where um he he can't take his glasses off or he can't see dirt you know but he's like i'm good with the pommel horse but you really can't watch while you do it yeah, you just sort of go. go anyway i've never heard of this guy well part of what hurts my heart in a controversy like this is people feel like they got to thrust a microphone in some of these people's faces and go mm. what do you think about the uh -huh. open you're like I trained eight years to do yeah. the pommel horse, not, you know? Yeah. I mean, and like you're saying, depending on where he was in the, the parade of athletes in the opening, he probably yeah. doesn't have a clue. It's so unfair to ask him. Yeah. Like, I don't I don't want to say anything critical about the Olympics. I'm glad to be here, you know? Mm. Maybe, again, a LeBron, he weighs in on politics. He yeah. weighs in on everything. It may be fair to ask LeBron because he's yep. kind of anointed himself as yep. being, I'm an athlete with privilege. I'm going to weigh in on everything that happens in America. Okay, put the mic in his face. Yep. Uh, Joe Schmo, there yeah. to, you know, I don't think that's fair. And I, my heart hurt for them because no, they're getting asked good. tough questions. You know, it's interesting. Well, one cool thing that I did think about was I think we miss out. If our response is total disengagement, which I think often is a response, like just, oh, just yeah. we're just done. I mean, you have that right, and, you know, okay, fine. But speaking of him, we watched that. We watched the men's gymnastics. We missed, like, maybe the first half, but we got to see. We're like, well, who is the dude sitting on the – like, the teammates yeah. were going crazy. He's sitting over there with his glasses on just <laughs> with just stone cold. Waiting serious. for his moment, Like, man. that guy's somebody. Who is this dude? And then he comes out, like, with the cape, takes off his – I mean, like, he's the guy. He's like, he's either yeah. going to bring us home a medal. I think we've been without a medal in that field for 16 years. Yeah. And he goes up and just destroys it. You know, I get goosebumps watching the boys. We're all, we don't even know that we're like, but all of a sudden yeah. we find ourselves cheering for this kid. And next thing you know, it's, uh, I guess his mom had passed away. I don't, I don't know how recently, but I don't know at some point uh, recently. And uh, so it was just his dad in the street. I guess they met up afterwards and he's got his glasses yeah. on and everything. And his dad's giving this big old hug. It's just a cool moment. You're just like, wow. And then they share the mom passed away. Share like, wow, that makes that moment even more special. But then you know what I noticed? Guess what the father had on his hat? 
Mm, I didn't see. He had the gospel, the uh, arrow down, arrow up. Arrow, it was yeah, like that that yeah. thing, and I'm like, guys. And Jesus that was a cool. Down, so that down, was a cool yeah. moment, and that's what I appreciate about who God is. Is like people can mock him, people can try to, they can do whatever they want, but God is on His throne, and He is sovereign, and He is at work. And I'm glad me and my family got that moment to see that. That's a little redemption of what whatever the world tries to do. Nothing's new in the sun. The world will continue. There'll be something new. You know, it won't. Have, we won't have to wait till the next Olympics. Can we agree on? Yeah. Not going to wait yeah. till the next Olympics for Jesus to be mocked. But I do appreciate that there is God. You see Him at work, even in the midst of the silliness. You know, we've got folks um, with the IMB over there doing incredible work right now on the ground. We have people in our church doing work at the Olympics. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's really nuts. powerful stuff. And so, you know, I thought that was really redeeming, and I'm thankful for that. I, I'm grateful that the mockery doesn't win in the end. Yeah, that's been that's encouraging. See, and that's where I, you know, from a organization standpoint, you know, we, we run events. We technically every Sunday's an event to some degree. Sure. You know, that's where I would tell the director, I mean, you missed an opportunity because that kid should not have to answer a question about what happened at the opening ceremony. That's right. You know, I mean he shouldn't. No. The opening ceremony celebrate France, uh, again, celebrate the Olympics, <laughs> Greek culture. Yep. I get it. I mean again, yeah. But I think any reasonable person knows that they crossed a boundary, and again, I think they did it intentionally. When when you do something to to make your ceremony divisive enough that all your athletes are now going to get asked how they feel about it or what they think, you've just taken the focus mm. off the unity of the games. The mm. story should be this kid and mm. and his competition and and all that. Now he's going to get asked questions, yep. especially if someone sees his daddy's yep. hat and he actually knows his dad's a believer. Mm. I know what he's going to yep. get asked, and yep. that's a shame. That yep. That's the mistake yep. because the Olympic Games can be very unifying. And, yep. um, of course, we've got a man who proclaims himself to be a woman boxing a woman tonight. Wait, what? <sighs> yeah, there's a transgender man. Um, no, they're letting ready. him compete? I thought we made the decision uh, not allow this. I don't this. know how, but I just – No. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's happening. Oh. So I feel for that young lady because her Olympics is, you know – Again, it's one of those things. That's the culture we're living in. That and, probably and makes me where, more angry than the opening <laughs> yeah, ceremony. I mean, that's where, this dude's going to be beating and, up on a woman. Yeah, and what's the response? Well, I'm not going to watch that bout. No. It, it shouldn't be happening. And no, I, I, it shouldn't. Know, but it doesn't mean I won't watch something else that yeah. has my interest. Because, again, the, yeah. the people who are getting ready to compete, yeah. that's above their – they didn't make that decision. That's they didn't right. have anything right. to do with it. Yeah. The the kid I wish I could remember his name that's kind of sad but the yeah. the guy with the glasses the the pummel isn't it called the pummel horse pummel me horse. and the boys like what yeah. what do we call this again and so anyway that's that's fantastic no I like that and you're right those athletes deserve their moment I mean they yeah. deserve the moment and that's where we have to be careful I think as Christians too things are offensive and you know but just like movies are offensive okay well if the movie's offensive you don't have to go yeah but also be mindful there are people who help make that movie. That had nothing to do with the content. They didn't know yeah. what they were. Don't, you know, don't just throw yeah. a blanket over everybody and say, well, they're all wicked. Yeah. Well, for all we know, there was some little believer in there, you know, running a graphics thing mm-hmm. that he didn't even know what the movie was about. He yeah. was doing his job, yeah. you know, and, and he may be sharing the gospel with somebody in the cubicle yeah. beside him at some studio, you know. I mean, I think that's why I'm not a big, we don't do all the, well, we're going to boycott Disney, you yeah. know, in our church. Hey, if, I don't. I don't want to give Disney my money. I'll be yeah. honest. Now, I I did finally break back down. We had to get Hulu at home, which yeah. means you get Disney Plus, you get ESPN Plus. Hey, Moana Two's coming out. That was a solid movie. You know, movie. there's, I'm there's excited good about stuff. That. You know, I'm not so blanket, well, but at the same time, you know, if if people don't feel like going to Disney and giving them, yeah. money, don't do that. Yeah. But understand, there are people affected by the Disney conglomerate. Not everybody involved in Disney has gone off yeah. the deep end with all these yeah. DEI That's thought. Good. I mean. You know, just so th- be careful. No, I, that's good wisdom, and that's good. I think it takes maturity to see that, right? Because the immature response is just like, oh, it's all it's all bad. Christians are the worst at that, by the way. It's like if something has an inkling of bad, <laughs> we're like, it's all bad. Yeah. Well, you know, we probably should be willing to break this down a little more than that, right? Yeah. Um, so, man, that's good. I appreciate it. you have any more closing thoughts for us on the, the topic? Do you think yeah. they're going to get this right? Do you think they're going to learn from it? Do you think the next opening ceremony is going to say, you know, maybe we should use this opportunity to unite? Do we, do we learn that lesson? 
Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> you know, I mean, but that it goes back to my thought that that it, would be so reasonable, yeah, though. It Greg. depends like, on who's in charge, but yeah. I think we do have to understand. <laughs> let me make a, a politically loaded remark, and but I, I believe I can back it up with biblical theology. The angry left, so to speak, the far left that that does not have any respect for Christ or really any organized religion, if we're being honest, mm. besides the one that they're making in their own, they're not going to unite. Mm. They don't want to any more than the far right or, you yeah. know. So you're asking the wrong people probably to unite. Mm. Um, you know, you may get lucky and draw uh, a country and a culture somewhere where there's some sanity, mm. but I think it's very, very unlikely. Mm. Um, and, and again, does that mean I'll never watch the Olympics again? No, I just think, you know, we, we're not going to encounter that in yeah. our day and our time. And, you know, Jesus probably didn't either. That's why Paul was yeah. so offended. You know, I mean, nobody was apologizing to him. Well, we didn't mean to mock your religion when you walked yeah. into Athens. No, Athens is going to be what Athens is going to mm. be. And we have to understand that Christianity is a subculture. Mm. Um, maybe it hadn't always been in America, but mm. it is now. It's a subculture, and when you're a subculture, you're going to get stepped on. Mm. Um, and Jesus didn't punch back, and I don't think we should either. Mm. Just keep doing the right thing the right way and proclaiming Jesus, and that's how a subculture should behave. It's one thing I've always appreciated about the Psalms is that you see those Psalms where they recognize, man, the world is against God and everything godly. Yeah. And I'm having a really hard time with that, Lord. And you you yeah. get to, re- I would encourage anyone who does wrestle with that tension of the world's mockery of Christ and Christianity and everything good and right to your point of the transient. Now we're going to let this dude compete against the female. This is absolutely absurd. I get super discouraged with that. I, and I, I've i been very thankful for the Psalms the last few years because that type of insanity in our world has really discouraged me. And I appreciate when they cry out to God that there's no easy answer for it because it's not changing and they it's almost like you see that they know they're incapable of that change and but they're 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 wrestling with that and yeah. I appreciate that so I, I would encourage people to to go to the Psalms because you get those emotions you get them wrestling with God I want to honor you you know it's interesting because they kind of give their little they they kind of spew oh, some get, stuff they're getting angry but yeah. they come back at the end they always come back at the end if you get to the end of the Psalm it you, they settle in the right spot yeah. And I think that would be the test for us. As long as we're settling toward the end of the psalm, we're good. I think I don't think God was dishonored with them saying what they said here. But I think he would th- that they landed in the right spot and I certainly think that would be good for yeah. us to do as well. No, I agree. That even, you know, you could bring Israel in not to go off on that subject, but you know, I would argue that Israel does not the same Israel from which the psalm writers came they're no longer actively following the God that we worship. I, yes. I believe Israel's an apostate country. Why is Israel the only nation in the world where they get attacked and they get yeah. in trouble for defending themselves? Mm. It's because to the rest of the world, they're still God's people. Mm. You know, again, I would say the rest of the world hadn't really studied up what God's word actually says, and Israel's mm. got some repenting to do. But Israel is universally hated by the rest of the world because in, in the rest of the world's mind, they're God's people. Mm. So you can treat Israel in ways you can't treat any other country. Mm. And I, I believe history bears that out, and I believe the current mm. arguments about all that's going on in the Middle East prove that. Um, and so, again, what's the Christian response? It's like, well, Israel's been getting it for years, and we're probably going to get ours too. And, Mm. um, you know, a little mockery on the Olympics is kind of par for the course. So Mm. um, we didn't have people invade and rape and butcher and and kill people in our streets and then have NATO tell us we're the terrorists for responding, you know? So maybe we're getting off easy right now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's one way to look at it. Probably not the best way, but it's accurate. It's a fair point. Yeah. It's good. Well, I appreciate it, man. Thank you so Mm. much and appreciate your wisdom. And, and uh, and just you point us to to uh, think about some things, because it's hard. It's hard. I mean, I think our last two discussions have admitted that it's uh it's not so easily like the things that we have to face in this world is it, it's you have to wrestle with some of that. And um, yeah, so I got to lower the blood pressure. That's yeah, all yeah, that's do. right. That's right. <laughs> well, thank you, my friend. Until next time, right. God thank bless. You.